everybody, my name is Deja and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my June and July wrap up. So I did not do a wrap up for June. Well, I actually filmed it. I just didn't edit it. So I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna just combine them. And total, I have 29 books to talk about. I did not end up reading 20 books in July like I wanted to. But I realized that when I'm anxious, I don't read. I'll think about reading but I just need to distract myself in a way that's not reading normally which sounds weird but like if I'm physically reading I feel like I get too distracted in audiobooks I feel like I'd be too in my own head like I need to like watch something generally but that's kind of besides the point so since I have so many books to talk about 29 I decided to just do a tier ranker but first I'm gonna go over my stats and then we'll go over the um, different tiers and then we will start ranking the books so sorry if you can hear my computer, she's a little loud, this is my new computer, but in June I read 16 books, 6 of those were by POC authors, um, 9 of those books that I read were owned, which is really really amazing, and I read 4,596 pages. Two of the books I read were fantasy, five were horror, two were mystery, six were romance, and one was a thriller. And then for format, four of the books that I read were mixed between audiobook and either ebook or physical. Four were audiobooks, five were ebooks, and three were read physically. For audience, 12 of them were adult, two were new adult, and two were YA. I had one two star, two three stars, two 3.5 stars, eight four stars, two 4.5 stars, and one five star. And then for type, I read 10 novels, five novellas, and one graphic novel slash manga. Then for July, I read 13 books, so not nearly close to um, 20. Um, only one of those was a POC author, so July was really tragic. For Summerween, I was trying to read the thrillers that I own on my shelves, and unfortunately, not many thrillers are written by black authors unless they're about black trauma, and I don't always want to read about that. So yeah, 12 of the 13 books that I read were owned, so that is amazing, almost all of them. And I read 4,277 pages, and so two of those were horror, one was literary fiction, five were romance, and five were thrillers. And then for format, nine were a mixture between audio and something else one was read as an ebook and three were read physically for audience all 13 were adult books i had one two star one three star three three point five stars three four stars three four point five stars and two five stars and for the type i read 11 novels and two novellas so every time i do my statistics i feel like i literally am just throwing information at y'all but you say y'all eat it up in the comments so i'm gonna keep doing it because they're already there i don't have to do anything extra to figure them out and y'all say that y'all love it so yeah um but i'm going to start screen sharing to show y'all my tears okay so i obviously did tiktok sounds i don't know if we're all on the same side of tiktok i feel like i'm on a unique side of tiktok but you know what i did what i did and i did the sounds and i'll try and insert clips or something of them so i can get the gist of the sound so i'm gonna start at the bottom actually so the first one is i got, got another ninja that gonna do it if he don't I just tell him what i want because i got another kid that's gonna do it if he don't uh, and it's too bad it's too good when you say me tell him me good I'm gonna just say ninja so YouTube and the girlies don't come for me. But this is part of a Megan Thee Stallion song. This is the bottom tier. So it's basically saying like, if this book ain't gonna deliver what it was supposed to deliver, I got another book that's gonna do it for me. It's easily replaceable. It's it's not really giving what it was supposed to give. And I, I'm gonna replace the book, literally. The tier up from that is not funny, ha ha. Funny, weird. Hmm, funny, yes, but not funny, ha ha. Funny, weird. And this is for books that were just a little off. Like they weren't bad necessarily, but they just were a little off. That's what I'm gonna say. The one above that's like, nice to meet you, no running. Nice to meet you, no running. Thanks, I'm I'm just coming. Which is from a SZA song. And so it's basically saying like, it was nice to meet this book. I'm not running from this book. It wasn't bad. It was it was nice to meet the book, but it's not anything necessarily special, but I had a good time. And the one above that is the damn gravy. You so vicious. You so clean. So delicious. And I don't even like that sound, to be honest, because I feel like the white girlies love that sound a little too much. But this is for books that were so delicious like i ate them up i love them i ate them up this is a good tier like the books that end up in this tier were were good they were quality i had such an amazing time like really would recommend them but the top tier let me show you how the gangsters do it uh. 
let me show you how to chase let's do it I know you this tier is for the books that are literally so good they're showing the other books how to do it they're showing the books how to be a five out of five they are the blueprint they're just not so delicious they are the it girl so those are my tiers and i'm just going to get into the ranking now so the first book that i had that popped up is drag me up by arm virtues this is a hades and persephone retelling in a casino type environment and the um heroine is trans and it's a very um it, it's dark but it it has like a dark feeling and a dark atmosphere but not many dark things actually occur in my opinion i'm gonna put this one in nice to meet you no running it's like really in between the nice to meet you and so delicious i gave this book 3.5 stars i really did like it but the main character she's also like part of like kind of like a a circus but she does acrobatics and she like does like the little flips in the air and i realized that i don't really like circuses and books like any kind of circus element automatically makes me probably won't give the book above 3.5 stars so it's a really good book i would definitely recommend it but just because of that one element i just couldn't do it it's just not gonna be a favorite favorite for me the next up i have the perfect child and i'm gonna put this one in um damn gravy you so vicious you so clean so delicious um this one is also kind of on the verge of being in the um let me show you how the gangsters do it but this one um i did really like i gave it 4.5 stars it very much is reminiscent of the push if you like that one by ashley audrain i'm not going to talk about this book too much because i talked about it a lot in my summer ween vlogs i have two of them if you haven't seen them um so a lot of these books are going to be from there so i won't talk about them too in depth but this one is like an evil child trope book and i feel like the push had more commentary on motherhood which really made me enjoy it. this one i feel like is a little bit darker it pushes the envelope a little bit more in its grittiness but the push had more commentary that i enjoyed more so i still haven't decided which one i enjoy more um or if i even enjoy one more so i'm just gonna put this one here because having already read the push made me not enjoy this one as much if i read this one first i may have enjoyed it more and i know a lot of people read this one after the push and they love it way more but because of that commentary in the push i just i don't know i don't know then the next one that i have up is the kind work killing by peter swanson this was another one that i read for summer ween and i'm honestly gonna put this one in let me show you how the gangsters do it i think i gave this one 4.5 stars as well and i don't think that this is the most memorable thriller there's some stuff in this that i've already forgotten but i think that this thriller is showing people how to do plot twists in a way that's actually good this one really was a back to back to back to back plot twist and made it literally pulled the rug out from underneath you but it didn't do it in a way that made you Feel like it was unrealistic like it wasn't just plot twist for the sake of plot twist like they actually made sense and they added up and that's what i really really liked about this one it was addicting the end was like not my favorite so actually i think i'll put it in the tier below and now that i'm thinking about it the end part was not my favorite the last like little bit like didn't completely make sense to me but the plot twist in this book were just so phenomenally done i just can't get over it it was literally it ate and it left no crumbs not a single drop okay but the end was a little mm, but i still really really had a good time the next up i have satan's affair and i'm gonna put this one in nice to meet you no run in this is the prequel to haunting adeline which is going to come up later in this ranking and um i read this because my book club pick for swoon sisters in what was it was it june or was it in may girl i don't even know don't ask me regardless haunting adeline was our book club pick and i heard that you should read satan's affair before you read the first book because it adds context and definitely before you read the second book you technically don't have to and i honestly think satan's affair stands on its own as as well like you can just read satan's affair and have a good time it's like a amusement park which I know I said I don't like circuses, but I like amusement parks. This one is like an amusement park, a reverse harem, dark, murderous erotica. It's kind of giving like the Mindfuck series meets Harley Quinn meets an amusement park. And um, I really enjoyed it. And I would definitely recommend it even if you just want something to read around Halloween that's like really dark and erotic. I'd recommend this honestly. Um, okay so the next one i have another novella which is feed and i'll put this one in let me show you how the gangsters do it this book was good i mean it's a novella but i didn't expect to like it as much as i did because 
um i don't really think i'm like a big fan of monster romances i haven't read a ton a ton but i'm not like a monster romance girly and i know some girlies will go hard for their monster romances but you know what i would prefer my serial killers you know my serial killers my bullies my toxic men like i prefer that um over monsters but i love it for the girlies who love the monsters um but this one i really really liked it like i think this is how you do a monster romance except there were some descriptions that were like saying that he looked kind of like an insect i didn't really enjoy that part but the rest of it i enjoyed but we have a succubus and a monster and there's some um queer representation in here and it's just really good i don't know like it's good okay um and it's kind of like enemies to lovers i know there's a full book about them after this and it's kind of like their prequel but i really did enjoy it for a quick smutty novella it wasn't doing too much i enjoyed it and it surprised me because it was a monster romance then i have the fourth monkey and i'm gonna put this one and let me show you how the gangsters do it i loved this thriller this is one of my standout thrillers for real from summer ween because this is my type of thriller i feel like a lot of the thrillers that i read for summer ween were like domestic thrillers and while i still enjoy them like the kind worth killing i did really enjoy the perfect child i really enjoyed but the fourth monkey is like my kind of thriller it's like a dark disturbing serial killer thriller with detective perspectives and i i ate it up i ate it up this is how you do a serial killer thriller it's literally giving criminal minds like it's it's giving what it's supposed to give and i can't wait to continue on in the series i forgot that it was like a series because most thriller series are like kind of like standalone each book is like a different case kind of like in criminal minds how each episode is a different case generally but this one it ends off on a cliffhanger and the next book follows like the same plot which honestly i wish it didn't but I can't really fault it for that. I knew going in that it was a series. I just didn't think it was going to be that kind of series. So I can't fault the book for doing what it did. Um, but it was still, it was phenomenal. I would definitely, definitely recommend it if you like serial killer um, thrillers. Then I have A Call for Kelp. And I'm going to put this one in Nice to Meet You No Run. And I'm pretty sure I gave this one 4 stars or 3.5 stars. I give most of these books um, in, in this series 3.5, 4 stars, sometimes 4.5 or 5 stars. Um, but they are very formulaic because they are cozy mysteries. So I can't fault it but that does take away my enjoyment is the um formulaicness of the stories um it's the fourth book i believe in the, the seaside cafe mystery series by brie baker i do really like this series and i do really enjoy the characters and the relationships between the characters the main character is not my favorite especially because she focuses a lot on weight and weight loss which is like not necessarily a problem but the way that she talks about it i'm not particularly a big fan of but this one was good it was a good installment in the series but I, like i'm not gonna ever think like oh my god a call for help is like one of my favorite books like it's not gonna happen but it was a fun time when i read it then I have The Never King, and I'm going to put this in now, funny, ha ha, funny, weird. I gave this novella three stars, and this was the July buddy read for Swoon Sisters, because we have buddy reads for July and August, which we've never done before, but I am excited that we did them. And The Never King, I did enjoy. I had a good time. It was a Peter Pan retelling, but it just wasn't, it didn't hit the way that I wanted it to hit, if that makes sense. The characters, I enjoyed a lot of the um, heroes because this is like a reverse harem. But the heroine, I didn't really enjoy. I found her really whiny. And there was a lot of like world building in this, which I didn't mind. Like I don't mind a fantasy. I knew going in it was more fantasy leading because um, my friend Sarah from Sarah Shell, she told me. And she thought that I might like it more because it's like that. But I feel like because it's a novella and it, there was so much smut in this, the world building was just like non-existent. Like I literally know that there is like world building, but like besides that, like I don't know much about the world. Like it was, it didn't really go in depth. And I know this isn't a series, but like to for me to have read the first book and basically have no grasp or understanding on the world um, besides that it's fantastical is like not great. Like the world building was just really underdeveloped for me and the main character was annoying smut to me was like low-key forgettable like it wasn't anything special to write home about um so it was just okay like i didn't have a bad time while reading it but it was just it just it was what it was because every single thing in it is me next up i have haunting adeline which i'm also gonna put in that same tier um i wish i liked this one a little bit more especially because i bought it it's so big my main problem that i have with this was that it was so long girl this book was lengthy she was girthy me and nicole were like how long is this book it took us both forever we literally had to push back the live show because neither of us had it finished well we had other reasons too why we had to push back but that was also part of the reason because we neither of us had this book finished it was just so long long and this one is like a stalker romance and as i said satan's affair is like the prequel novella to this story and the main character is an author but we never really see her be an author besides that being kind of like the way that the 
Kiro gets introduced to her is through like an author event um but I wish we had more like authory stuff in this um because it really was like forgotten basically and then what had me was it everybody loves Zayd and you know what maybe when I read the second book because I probably will read the second book because I just want to know um is that Zayd because everybody says that the second book is way darker and I'm just like what okay okay but Zayd he goes after men who um mostly kidnap women and children and bring them into like sex work and like sex trafficking and he like kills them because he's like that's bad like you can't do that to people and then he literally like sexually assaults the main character and don't get me wrong i've read a couple books where the hero sexually assaults the heroine and that generally doesn't bother me in dark books because i kind of know that's the territory that i'm going into especially like bully romances stalker romances stuff like that it doesn't normally bother me but in this it bothered me because like if someone is gonna do something like that if they're gonna be bad like that i need them to just be like okay well i'm bad i do what i did and i'm not that's it that that's it but in this book he was like i'm a good guy i kill bad guys and then he did like a similar thing that the bad guys that he kills does i'm like you literally kill people for doing stuff like this and then you did that and like i know that he's a stalker and he's supposed to be like whatever whatever like infatuated with her but i feel like it just wasn't explored enough like he was just like obsessed with her but we didn't really get to see it as much as i wanted to like at least with like joe goldberg for example i feel like we're in his head a lot so we like even though he's like fascinated with them for kind of like no reason like he just sees them and he's like oh, that's her that's her we still like understand like he has like things about them or at least rationalizes his obsession with traits about them my favorite book of the year as of now is um there are no saints by sophie lark and i love that book and that's another stalker romance but i feel like in that book the stalking and the obsession slowly grows over time and there's more explanation and details for why that happened there's more behind it in this book there was like really no justification for his stalking which again there doesn't necessarily have to be but at least some rationalization at least something especially because he's doing things to her that he kills people for doing that's the part that had me and it was too long but there was little inserts because the main character her grandma apparently also was being stalked and she left letters about this and she like mysteriously died they all think that it's the stalker and she moves into her home at the beginning of the book and it's apparently like haunted probably by her we don't get too much about it in the first book but there's a little bit of like spooky paranormalness in this book um but we get these little like letters slash diary entries that she writes and that was honestly my favorite part of the book i really really enjoyed that part and i wish we had more of it i gave this book three stars still because it really the writing was good i like the dark atmosphere but I just had some problems. Then I have My Killer Vacation. I'm going to put this book in Damn Gravy, You So Vicious, You So Clean, So Delicious because I really did like this book. I really do believe it's the perfect blend between a smutty romance and a cozy mystery. It's not my favorite Tessa Bailey that I've read, but I did really like it. The mystery in this was not super, super developed because in cozy mysteries, I feel like they are kind of just formulaic. There's not always like a really good explanation for the end, but this has some of my favorite smut that I've ever read. I don't know if it's just me some people say that they thought it was creepy i don't know i loved this smut in this book it's some of the best smut i think i've ever read it's probably my favorite tessa bailey smut that i've read so far out of the three books of hers that i've read but it was one of my like least favorite plots because again cozy mysteries are very formulaic uh, a lot of the time but i think having that romance aspect really made it better and i just had a really really good time reading this is it super memorable no but is any book really super memorable to me no i have a bad memory so yeah but i just remember the smut in this was fire um next moving on to horror store which is another book that i read for summerween and um i also forgot to say in june i believe it was i participated in the queer romance readathon so i read feed for that and um, i also read drag me up for that and i think i participated in something else in june but i literally can't remember um so horror store i'm gonna put this in damn gravy you so vicious you so clean so delicious i really did like this book more than i anticipated because i feel like this is like one of grady hendrix's books that gets the most hate and i don't know why i did really really like it it was just a good time it was fun it was campy horror and it went supernatural in a way that i don't normally like but i just had a good time reading it it was shorter so i feel like because of the length when there's an element in there that i don't traditionally like in books if a book is shorter 
I feel like it can normally do it better than if it was more extended out. So I did really enjoy this one. I also believe that it had commentary on capitalism and the cycle of being in a capitalistic society and like what that means for your job and working in a corporate environment. And I work at Target, which is like very, very heavily corporate. And so seeing that commentary in a book, I really enjoyed it. I've never heard anybody say that about this book, but to me, I really picked up on it and I really enjoyed that. The next I have Zenny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. I'm gonna also put this one in. Let me show you how the gangsters do it, actually. Um, this is a novella as, as well. It's a marriage of convenience trope, and I really did like this. It's about this girl who her like great aunt or whatever dies and to get her inheritance because apparently this great aunt was she was rolling in that dough okay nobody knew so to get that money she had to like marry the specific man that her great aunt was friends with that they're like similar ages and he's like a big scottish man and he has that little redheadedness and i just really ate it up it was like literally serotonin in a novella it was smutty it had some interesting smut things in it that i'm not gonna get too much into but i've never read them before and they're not particularly like my taste but like i appreciated them for what they were and i just had a good time reading it, it literally was so wholesome and cute and if you just want something cute I definitely recommend picking this up. Then I have Witchy, which is a graphic novel. And I'm, I'm gonna put this in not funny, haha, -ha, funny, weird. This was just another three star for me. I didn't have a bad time reading it at all, but I feel like the plot for this one went like in a weird direction that I wouldn't expect it to go for the first graphic novel. It literally felt like two different graphic novels slammed together, which is just like really weird because I never have that problem where like it feels like the plots of the graphic novel are disjointed, but that's really what it felt like in this novella. But I like the representation. The world was interesting. It was just a little bit underdeveloped. I just want to see more of like the world. I'll still probably continue on in the series, but it's just not the top of my mind or anything like that it was okay and so next up i have shipped which i read for a reading vlog that should be coming out soon as well as my killer vacation i also read for that um but i'm gonna put it in i got another ninja that gonna do it if he don't this book y'all like this book that much y'all really go that hard for this book really i'm not judging y'all but i just don't get it i wish i got it but i gave this book two stars it really was not bad by any means it's just like i've been there done that like i don't want to read another boring white vanilla romance with characters that have the personality of salty crackers and barely have any chemistry like i've already read those like the hayden game ate her up on honeymooners ate her up i love those books when i read them when i was like 16 and now i've just been reading romance for so long like this was just too vanilla for me and it literally is described as like the hating game meets on honeymooners which is literally true like i didn't even realize that it said that on the back um but i said that in my vlog um where i'm vlogging this and i was like oh like i looked at the back and the first line literally says that and i literally had no idea because it's that obvious that the author took inspiration from those stories this is what like housewives read for fun and like think that it's like it's giving and it just like it was boring it was vanilla okay thank you moving on then i have one last stop by casey mcquinston and i'll put this one in not funny haha -ha, funny weird as well because this one it was just okay i liked parts of it other parts of it i didn't like i really really enjoyed the side characters a lot the romance between the two main girls i feel like they really did not have much chemistry but i enjoyed the characters individually more um than together and i feel like it was just trying to do too much like i feel like the author just didn't know how to handle all the different aspects especially the time travel and i feel like it was just too much like that nothing was really um developed as much as i wanted it to be which made me sad i still had an okay time reading it it definitely wasn't bad i just probably like won't think about it like compared to red white and royal blue like this was just not it i think the strong point for me for red white and royal blue is the characters like the plot didn't even have to do nothing it was just the characters and this book the characters were literally just like eh like i enjoyed them more separately but they still weren't like stand out the side characters were more interesting as i said then i'm crime is a passion by jack harbin which is an audible exclusive novella and i'm gonna put this on let me show you how the gangsters do it so crimes of passion i really really enjoyed this one it's a gay romance between two um true crime podcasters and it was just so cute and i loved like the podcast elements and it was just really, really good. And I love seeing a gay romance not written by a woman. I feel like most gay romances that you know of that are more popular are written by straight white 
cis women and it's just not always it like I want to see representation from the people who are being represented and I loved it. it they were both black and it was just delicious and seeing like two black men have true crime podcasts too like I literally ate it up it was so 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 good and cute and I just had a good time the next up I have brother and I'm actually gonna put this one in damn gravy you so vicious you so clean so delicious this one is kind of verging in between these two again like the nice to meet you one as well but this one is really really good it is it just wasn't necessarily what I expected this one is a bit slower um some people say that it's a horror it's definitely not it's definitely a thriller um but it is about a cannibalistic family and it's more about family dynamics and more psychological aspects than it is about gore the, I feel like for this book there's really not much gore like there definitely is a little bit like cutting up bodies but like on page killing it doesn't really occur to like the end and then still like it's kind of giving more like thriller than it is like a horror but I really did like the psychological aspects of this and the family dynamics of this it really was a good read and if you're looking for something that focuses more on those kinds of aspects and is not like super gory in my opinion also like my level of gore and your level of gore may be different so I would just still be careful if you are um hesitant about gore but I did really really like it um i think that if i had a little bit more cannibalism a little bit more goriness i would have liked it more because like the middle part did drag a little bit it was slow but i understand why it needed to be that way to build up towards the end but again if i just had like a little bit of like spice a little bit of gore a little bit of blood i would have enjoyed it a little bit more then i have we can never leave this place and i'm putting this in let me show you how the gangsters do it okay because this book was so good. This is my second favorite Eric LaRocca. I've read three so far. This is definitely my second favorite. Um, with Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke being my top favorite. And this one was just so interesting. I really went down a whole rampage when I read this book. I finished it like at like 2 a.m. or something. And then I stayed up for like an extra hour or two trying to like figure out and decipher the meaning of like this book. Like I watched videos and interviews because even though it's such a short novella, like I could see like it had so much commentary placed into it and in such an interesting way this focuses a lot on insects vermin rodents so if you don't like that stuff you find that stuff very triggering don't read this unless you want to be triggered like i don't like insects i don't like i don't like vermin at all um and in this book it was a little bit triggering like it definitely disgusted me like there's like this spider-man literally like rips off his own leg and eats it and like mm -mm -mm. disgusting but I just found it so interesting in so many aspects and then at the end it just flips the whole thing on its head you're just like what what and it was just crazy just pick it up if you haven't read it and you don't think you'll be triggered by like the vermin in it I just pick it up then i have notes on an execution which i read for the buzzwordathon because for july it was like read a book that has something related to books in it so I did notes that's close enough because like notes pages books close enough really nigga and i'm gonna put this one in nice to meet you no running this one was good but it wasn't for me i don't think this is more of like a literary suspense or like a literary thriller which i knew that going in it's not like a super um in your face like fast paced or graphic thriller that's definitely not what this is and i knew that going in it's about a serial killer who's on death row and we get his perspective from actually second pov which it, that was honestly my favorite perspective of the book and we um have three other perspectives of women that are in his life and we get to see how it impacted him or how he was impacted because of that so we get his mother his ex-wife's twin sister and then we get the detective that was on his case of like these murders and it's just really sad to me because i wanted this book to work out i wanted to redirect the importance of serial killers stories um from the serial killer onto the victims and the people that they impacted that's what i want i don't want to always have to focus on the killers because i think we we just romanticize them a little too much but the fact that my favorite perspective was a serial killer perspective says a lot i think the other perspectives to me just were a bit boring i know that it was supposed to be literary and slow and whatever which like i don't always have a problem with sometimes i really enjoy those stories but in this i feel like the perspectives were not done in a way that made it seem like they were like it didn't it wasn't done in a way where it made it seem like the things that they were telling about those perspectives were 
important to the story it just felt like there was a lot of nonsense that really was not relevant it really didn't help tell the story in the way that it needed to be told i really did enjoy the detective perspective as well i think that one was like honestly like the most powerful the mother one was also really interesting but again there was still stuff in both of them that i was like is this really relevant like is this even showing like how they were impacted like it's just them doing a whole bunch of nothing for a while and I think that this is going to definitely be a favorite for some people but it just wasn't for me i don't know exactly what it could have done different but it just didn't deliver in the way that i wanted it to so that's what i have to say on that next up i have you've lost a lot of blood also by eric LaRocca. i read this one in june um oh for strange thon i literally forgot i was like what else did i participate in june strange thon my own readathon for my book club um i read this one for strange thon um and i read a couple of these for that as well but i'm gonna put this one in damn gravy you so vicious you so clean so delicious eric LaRocca's writing is going to hit every single time without fail their writing is just literally so good like it blows me out the water every single time i love it so much this one is a little bit weird in that it's a story within a story if that makes sense but like the story that's within this other story is like the main story so it's kind of hard to explain but basically we follow this serial killer and he is in a relationship with this other man and they just disappear one day but the police kind of figure out that they were killers so they're trying to track them down but we get like little like inserts of like these um kind of like notes they're not really notes because i think they, there was like audio recordings with them um but we get kind of inserts into the mind of this main killer and he actually wrote a published story that's called you lost a lot of blood and that part is like the main story and i wished personally that we got more of like the the main serial killer like the main overall story i feel like i wish we got more of that and i did enjoy it but the story within the story focuses a lot on like video games and virtual reality and stuff like that which i think could be really interesting it just wasn't what i was expecting at all and that's like not like my favorite thing i'm not like super into like that kind of sci-fi that's why it's my least favorite work from Eric LaRocca but I still had a good time in reading it and I enjoyed the characters I enjoyed the metaphors I wish we just had more of like the main story to be honest and I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more but I still really really enjoyed it because the writing is just so delectable I can't then I have Ace of Spades and I'm gonna put this one in nice to meet you no run and i think i give this one actually four stars but this one was really really hard for me to rate because it is so so heavily involved in black trauma people describe this as like gossip girl which i've never read but like meets like get out and it is about two kids that are two black kids that go to like this private white school that are getting blackmailed basically and this one was good but the end is just kind of giving to me um when no one is watching by Alyssa cole in the way that it was done every single time a black commentary thriller goes in such like a large way at the end i'm just like okay like it's just not my favorite i'm not saying it's not realistic because stuff like that can definitely happen it definitely does happen but when it is so like big it just i don't know like it just doesn't hit for me in the same way i wish it was just some people being evil and diabolical like not such like a big organization type ending if that makes sense it was still good and it was probably one of my favorites that i read that do like black commentary but the main male character in this he had so much trauma every struggle that the black community goes through he had it and i was like why are we putting this all on this boy and then the girl she was biracial and i feel like i related to her a lot especially when i was probably around um 15 16 because you know she is not um super accepting of her own culture and i feel like that definitely was me at one point so i definitely related to her and i liked seeing my past self represented in a book but again like it just wasn't necessarily my favorite i enjoy like the gossip girl type vibes i think i don't know i haven't watched gossip girl so i don't know like what exactly is those vibes but i enjoyed like the like academia type pretty little liars vibes is what i'm gonna describe it as because they're being blackmailed like at school is that not pretty little liars um but again like the ending just wasn't my favorite but i can understand what i was doing but i feel like this is definitely written for like white people and i feel like i just want more thrillers with black people in them or like thrillers written for black people um by black people but i feel like this one was definitely written to have such overt commentary super necessary because it was written for white people and it needed to be so in your face about it because sometimes white people just don't get it then i have what moves the dead by t king fish and i'm gonna put this in i got another ninja that gonna do it if he don't because this one was just not for me this is my second t king fisher book and i haven't really enjoyed either of them this is a retelling of the fall of the house of usher by edgar Allan poe which i love edgar Allan poe so much but this one's literally 
written like a classic like the writing is literally written exactly like a classic like not historical if you told me that this book was a classic and like you change the cover maybe change the title maybe change it to an author that sounds more like like they would have written classics i would have believed you like this literally is not just like a retelling of the fall of the house of usher like it literally is written in that way and i'm not i don't like the way that classics are written like i don't think most people do like it's just not fun writing it's very dense and the way that it went um it has a twist in it that is in another really popular horror and i didn't really enjoy it too much in there either it wasn't my least favorite part i didn't hate it or anything but it was also done in here and even in like the author's note they're like go read that book like i was so inspired by that book da -da -da. like it felt a little bit like too like they took a little bit too much inspiration from that book if you know what i'm saying like it was okay it was good i actually enjoyed how the twist was done in here more than i enjoyed it in that other book but i feel like again they took way too much inspiration the writing was literally like a literal classic so it just really was not my favorite I feel like I'm just gonna find another Edgar Allan Poe retelling because this one was just not it for me and I also read that one for Strangethon as well then I have The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager and I'm gonna put this one in Nice to Meet You No Run and I, I gave this one four stars as well and this one was definitely fun it was a good time I made a whole um, guide to Riley Sager if you want to watch that where I talk about where this falls in my ranking but it's definitely not at the bottom it's not traditionally like a thriller that I would like I still had a really really good time and it was nice to meet this book i had a good old time but it just wasn't my favorite it's not like a standout but it is going to be a little bit memorable for me because it was like one of the first books that i read with this kind of um not it's not even a twist like that goes in this kind of direction that i actually enjoyed so yeah i i don't know i just had a good time with riley Sigurd's books i always just have a good time like they don't, they're not literary masterpieces or anything but i have a good time you know like they're fun and i had a fun time i also really did like the main character being an alcoholic i know some people find that annoying but i feel like it was just very realistically done um for what i know I, i'm not an alcoholic but from what i know it just felt really realistic some people were gonna be like oh like she talks about alcohol too much like bourbon's mentioned way too many times but i'm like i feel like that's realistic to being an alcoholic like that's on your mind 24 7 so y'all complaining about that i just don't really think y'all should because it's like more of an accurate depiction of addiction so then i have zodiac academy and i'm also gonna put this in nice to meet you no run in this one i wanted to love more than i actually did this one is a fantasy romance but you really don't get much romance in the first book at all um it's a lot of bullying it is a bully romance so i enjoyed the bullying but this is a series is a series so you'll get more romance as the series goes on i haven't read the rest but i know that this book just felt a little bit like the writing was like crave <laughs> if that makes sense um the writing in this is definitely better than crave but still regardless it is very like pop culture -y, like a lot of like it's not really like refined in any way and um the characters to me were very like flat one-dimensional i know it's the first book in a series again but still your character shouldn't be flat like the two twins can barely decipher them um all of, like there's like four main guys can barely decipher all of them from each other um and then it's very much like a kitchen sink world where like it literally just throws every single thing in it like you're a vampire but you're fae you're a werewolf but you're fae like you're this but you're fae like it literally has zodiacs and and tarot and like all of this like it was just too much like it, the world needs to be more refined and maybe it will be later on in the series but there's just so much going on with a very little explanation i was like there did not need to be this many elements introduced in the first book um um, and i know we're supposed to be like learning along like with the girls because they're being introduced to this world but like the way that it was done was just like not my favorite personally and don't get me wrong i still had a good time this book was really really fast paced quick to read um but it did not feel like a complete book to me um i know again it's the first in the series so i know that there's more story there's more development more explanation more world building but in this it just felt like this was like an episode of a show rather than like a full season and to me a book should be a season and this one just felt like a single episode i don't know it just wasn't my favorite but again it was super fast paced the writing was fun the a lot of aspects of the world i did enjoy i just think this book needs more refining and it didn't have too much romance in it which i wanted more of but i know that it's gonna come later on and then i have survivor and i'm gonna put this in damn gravy you so vicious you so clean so delicious i guess i wouldn't say that's where i would describe this book as um but i don't know where else i would put it i guess maybe let me show you how the gangsters do it because if you read this book this show you how the gangsters do it i've had two people read this recently though and they said that it was boring and they didn't find anything triggering about it so i don't know but i know a lot of people will not be able to make it through this book so it's somewhere in between here um like my enjoyment level was here but it's showing you how the gangsters do it this is a um extreme horror it has 
something very very triggering in it it's going to be very triggering for some people for other people it's not going to be but it is a very big trigger like if you cannot handle anything related to babies be harmed don't read it there's been a lot of controversy with this lately in the book community but i had a good time i think that the day that i read this i was just really tired and i read it all in one day and so that's why it was like extra triggering for me but um it was it was a time it was very interesting and you know what that's all that i have to say on this book it was a time it was interesting the writing was good the way that it did the plot i enjoyed it was a little bit slow in the middle but i feel like it was realistic to trauma um i do wish that the main character was a little bit more traumatized to be honest but it was a good time then i have in my dreams i hold a knife and i'm gonna put this in damn gravy you so vicious you so clean so delicious as well because this book it was interesting it was just a whole bunch of tea like it was literally just a whole bunch of tea i don't know why this is like people's favorite thriller of the year or like a favorite of all time like i don't get that because it wasn't that good but it definitely had tea and i enjoy the tea i i will sip it up a whole bunch of white people complain about white people things and being rich and you know like all hating each other and just like having white people problems and you know what i ate it up that's literally all that i have to say the tea was there the twist i didn't see but that was uh, that's it i i enjoyed the tea then i have sundial and i'm gonna put this in the same tier as well i really did enjoy this one a lot it is also kind of has like an evil child trope but this one has a lot of animal abuse in it if that's going to be triggering for you it also has like a lot of like testing related to humans and animals which i found really really interesting i can't get into too much why that is but this book was definitely really really fun i would say honestly this is kind of like a mixture between brother and the perfect child if there's like some like stranger things scientific testing thrown in like that's kind of what this book is giving um i don't know if that makes sense like there's evil child trope there's a lot of family dynamics talked about like especially if, like a family being isolated and then there's also like testing like scientific type stuff with like genes and like stuff that i love that type of stuff so this book was really interesting and fun it takes place in the mojave desert and i did have like such a good time reading this and i feel like i just can't talk about this book too much because i feel like you should probably like not know that much going in that's like how i was as well but it was such a good good time so moving on to our last two books i have seven days in june by tia williams this is going and let me show you how the gangsters do it this is how you do a romance that talks about trauma i also read this for a vlog that's coming out so i'm not gonna go too much into it but this is what colleen hoover wanted it ends with us to be this deals with very different trauma it's not domestic abuse it's more like um self-harm and drug abuse and stuff like that but this is what she wanted it to be it's a beautiful black romance that's gritty it it's it's heartfelt but it's also just i don't know how else to describe besides gritty this is a gritty gritty romance and it's about two authors and i just loved every second of it it's a second chance romance but it's just so gritty and it's done so well this is definitely one of my favorites of the year and the last one i have is gone girl and i'm gonna put this in nice to meet you no run and i read this for summer ween as well and this book was good i see why it was so revolutionary i see why so many people love it from back in the day but the twist did not take me out off guard as i wanted it to and it I see again why it's the blueprint, why it's revolutionary, why it's da 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 but it just w didn't blow me out the water. It was way, 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 way too long. I really did enjoy the way that the author did get into the characters' heads, though. That was really fascinating to me, but it just was too long. It was too long for what it was and it may have been revolutionary back then but this is my final ranking for the books that i read in june and july i hope y'all enjoyed this video i know it's a bit of a long one, but i have 29 books to talk about leave a little monkey emoji down below for the fourth monkey um but again that's all that i have in this video today i hope y'all enjoyed and i'll see y'all on my next one bye everybody